Hey everyone, I wanted to come on and do a little video showing you what are some of the things that I get in the mail that uh, cause me to kind of pause and have that little discussion with myself. Should I keep it? Should I not? Blah, blah, blah. And kind of take you down the decision tree for me. So um, this is something I got, I think it was yesterday. It's uh, the New York Times style section. What usually happens with this is I um, toss it right out in the recycling um, bin. Uh, but because Barbara Streisand's on the cover, and I was just talking to my older son about Barbara Streisand and her career, she was on my brain. And when I saw this, I thought, oh, um, it would be interesting to read about what she's up to now. That's That seems kind of cool to me. So I told myself, um, am I really going to read it? And I was having a silly conversation with myself. I said, Tamar, just hold on to it for a few days. And um, I started reading it, and then I put it down. This is the type of thing that's easy. You just like, you know, it becomes part of everything around you and it just ends up in some pile somewhere or even not a pile, just ends up there and you pass it every day and you think, geez, I'd like to read that article. Geez, I'd like to read that article and you don't. So at least I started. But the point is this. I gave myself a deadline and it sounds strict and ridiculous and maybe it is strict, but I don't think it's ridiculous because it kind of keeps me from holding on to things. And ultimately, that's what I don't want to do is hold on to things that, like I always say, aren't serving me anymore. And if I didn't live in a world where there was, where there were hundreds of pieces of paper, thousands constantly coming into my home, then I wouldn't have to be strict. But because that is the world I live in, and because I don't want to have a cluttered house, this is the solution I've arrived at. So I will either finish the article tomorrow and throw it out, or I won't finish the article by tomorrow and I'll throw it out. And I kind of feel okay about it. And just to be clear, if this were an article that I was, you know, was 20 pages long and I was fascinated in and I knew that I was going to be reading it, but it would take a while, obviously I'd hold on to it, right? It's not some arbitrary strict rule that doesn't bend and flow with what, what you know, my needs are. Um, but you kind of become better at figuring out what goes into what bucket, you know, and this isn't a bucket of, it's interesting, I'm enjoying it, but it's not something I'm needing to read. You know, if I don't finish the end of the article, it's okay. And I'd rather have it not hanging around waiting than having it hanging around waiting for me to read. Okay. Another thing, Costco connection. I'm a member at Costco, which I haven't been to in, you know, since the pandemic started. Um, usually toss it out. There's just nothing in here for me. But uh, I found myself with a few minutes to kill and I just had picked, you know, uh, brought it in from the mailbox. And so I was looking through it. And lo and behold, I found these recipes in the back. I can show you just a nice, nice salmon recipe and um, this really nice steak recipe and uh, another fish recipe for haddock. And I was like, geez, that looks actually quite tasty, quite tasty. And a skillet roasted tenderloin steak. So the point is, I was like, hmm, recipes are kind of tricky. You can just gather them until the cows come home. And then, and then you have lots of recipes that are stuck somewhere or in a book somewhere. So I'm kind of in the middle of this. This too just came into my just came into my house, and I'm kind of like, huh? Do I do I rip it out? You know, do I rip out these pages and stick them on a bulletin board and kind of see what happens, or do I just toss the whole thing out, or do I keep the whole thing because there are other recipes? So I think what I'm going to do is rip out two recipes, and um, either once again, I mean, it sounds crazy. It even sounds silly to me as I'm saying it. But this is, once again, the world we live in, where it's all coming in. And so we, we're forced to make decisions. And if we don't make the decision of doing something with it, it just stays. And that multiplied by thousands of pieces of paper yields clutter. So I'm just showing you how I, how I kind of think about it, right? Um, yeah, I'm going to just rip this out right now. And guys, I'm telling you, if I don't purchase tenderloin or if I don't purchase haddock, they're going out. Because you know why? Um, I can look online for a really nice haddock recipe. 
right, or how to cook a particular type of steak. So these two, I think, I don't think I'm going to read the rest of the Barbara Streisand article as I'm chatting. So those two are out. Harry and David catalog. Um, they have kind of fine meats and cheeses and fruits and specialty items like that. And they always have their holiday catalog. And by the way, they have they they come like literally every two weeks or so around this time of year. So, 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 I was talking to my kids about possibly ordering their incredible Florida honey bells. There they are. Um, a crate of those, and uh, there were some kind of pears that I wanted to do. And then I thought, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I sent my parents something and if I sent this friend? And so this is precisely the type of thing that's just going to be placed down and I'm just not really going to get to it. And it's just every time I see it, I will think, oh, yeah, I wanted to order that. So what's happening with this is I'm throwing it out and I'll tell you why. I'm not ready to make those orders. It's just not a priority right now. And another one's going to come. So there you go. You see it's out. A stop and shop recipe booklet. I've never received this in the mail. Who knew that they created it? But they do. And oh my God, do they have a lot of cookie recipes. <laughs> they even have latka cookies. Never heard of that, but we're certainly going to be making latkas on Hanukkah. The point is, this is like a cookbook and it just keeps on going. Um, and who wouldn't want raspberry white chocolate fudge? I'm making the decision here, guys. You got to hold me to this. I'm keeping this for a week. I'm serious. You think I'm joking. I'm serious. I'm keeping this for a week, which is next Sunday. By then, I will either take out two or one recipes that I like and incorporate them into the little recipe thing that I have, or I will toss it out. Because guess what? I can find cookie recipes and all sorts of baking extravaganza things online or in other cookbooks, but mostly online. This is staying in my house for one week. Now, this is interesting. This is the New York Times from Friday, okay, so just two days ago. And there's an interesting the cover page article. Um, it is a sobering article, um, but it's basically about how the U.S. reached um, – a death toll um, that broke a record. It was the highest since the pandemic began, 2,885 coronavirus deaths. The reason I'm considering holding on to this is because um, I have been collecting um, a few articles here and there that I'm going to be making into a COVID scrapbook. Um, for myself and my kids, or if they're interested, for myself primarily, as some kind of record keeper. I, I, I think it's just such an extraordinary time in so many ways. I wanted to document it myself, and I'm not someone who typically does this. So I was asking myself, and every time I see an article that seems worthy of the scrapbook, you know, particularly moving or interesting or noteworthy, I always ask myself, hmm, should I keep this for the scrapbook? And um, I think I am going to keep this article. So I'm going to just keep the first page. Um, I'm not even going to keep the whole article. It's really, this one's going to be more of a visual. And then the rest gets thrown out. And then lastly, actually two more things. How to brighten up a dark season. So this is once again an example of a New York Times article and it seems really interesting and who doesn't want to read about how to brighten up a dark season? But I haven't read it yet. And uh, I don't know, like many, 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 many articles are gonna be written about this type of thing for the next however long. And there's also something on this side, this, this bench that I really liked but I think I'm gonna let it go. And then lastly, the New York Times book review, they've got their critics picks. So here's the deal with this. 
This totally could hang out next to my bed for like forever, you know? Um, I am imposing on it the by tomorrow rule, which I just made up now, the by Monday, okay? So either I read it tonight and I make note of some books that I'd like to read, or I don't, because guess what? Next week, there's another, there's another book review in the Times. So thank you for bearing with me um, during this whole thing. And the whole synopsis is really this. Paper continues to come into our lives every day. So if we can kind of respect this as just what it is as kind of one of the laws of the universe right now in modern day society, then we're better equipped to do something about it, to decide how we want paper to be in our lives. I should have started the video with this, but if we know that paper is simply a, um, a fact, it's like one of the laws of the universe, like gravity. I mean, it's just, it's going to keep coming in. If we are out and about in society, or if we somehow, um, if we're in society, you know, if we're, if we're part of it, um, and we have things to do and things to read and people to respond to and bills to pay and everything, it all comes down to um, an exchange that we're having as social beings, right? We're still using paper, even though it's a digital age, we still are. We're obviously still getting it. I just showed you, you know, five or six different, different examples. So um, if we acknowledge that it's going to come in, we then have a decision to make. Do we want to make a decision about where it's gonna go or do we not? If we don't make the decision, it stays and clutter builds. If we do make a decision, you have to make some sense out of it, right? Like, what are your rules for keeping it in your house? And it sounds crazy and onerous and annoying, and you don't want to do one more thing. You don't want to have another thing to think about. But if you prioritize this, okay, and this conversation that you have with yourself about the paper, if you prioritize it, as one of the four important things you're gonna do every day, you won't live with clutter because you'll be on top of it. You'll be making those decisions. If we acknowledge that decisions need to be made and then part two, we actually make those decisions, fantastic, we've got a plan, we're prepared. That's what it comes down to, my friends. Understanding what we're dealing with um, being honest about it, accepting it, accepting the reality that it's going to come in every day, dealing with it face to face, right? Head on and having a plan done. You guys are awesome. I hope this was helpful and I will see you soon. Bye.